everyone, today I bring you something that has been very much requested and that is a stretching and flexibility routine. You've all been asking me how you can improve your flexibility, how you can really get a good stretch and so I'm going to show you what I've come up with. The important thing about this particular routine is that you must do it once you are warm. After a workout, after class, something like that, do not do it with cold muscles. Because to improve flexibility, you have to stretch with when your muscles are warm. If you stretch cold muscles, you're going to rip them instead of lengthen and increase your flexibility. Now, I'm already warm. I just taught one of my classes online, which if you are interested, I will link below. Um, so again, do this after class, do it after a workout, um, but I think it will really help you. So the first thing you want to do, you've taken class, you've worked out, you just want to let your body release for a little bit. So stretch up, grab onto one wrist, bend toward the opposite side, letting the whole side release, just letting it go. You can hold this as long as you like, but I'm just going to kind of take you through it. And then you'll come up, bend toward the other side, good. If you've already done a workout and you're ready to follow along, you can, you can follow along with me. Good, and release it, roll the shoulders. Now we're going to stretch the neck because a lot of people don't realize how tight their neck gets. So just roll the head over to one side, flexing the opposite hand. And you should really feel the neck, especially in ballet class. When you're turning, you're jumping, you get really tense. And then maybe just look towards the floor. Good, and then we go to the other side. Just letting it release. Flexing the opposite hand, and maybe look towards the floor. Good. Again, you're already warm, so you're just letting your body cool down. So now we're going to come down to the floor, and you're just going to elbow this way, lie back, and we're just going to stretch the hamstring. So you bring one leg in, walk, rock it around a little bit, letting the hip flexor go, that's really important, and stretch it up. Now, when you're stretching like this, Try to keep the hips as square as possible. You want to be out here, you don't want to be around here, you know what I mean? You want to keep both hips flat and square, and that's how you get into the hamstring. So we just pull on the leg, letting it release, and then you push into the arms with the leg, really, really hard, pull, push with the hamstrings, and release it. Should go a little bit farther. Then we do that again. Push into the hands with the hamstrings, and release. Maybe one more time. If you watch my warm-up video, we do that at the bar. Just as a trick for the hamstrings. And then we just release it. And we stretch. You can flex the foot if you like. The key to stretching is you need to hold something at least 15 to 20 seconds. Doing it and then switching automatically is not really going to do anything for you. Um, your muscles are already warm. I can't say that enough. And so then when you hold the stretch, that's how they release. So maybe open it out to the side just a little bit. Again, keeping the hip flat. I'm not opening up, just keeping it flat. Cross the body a little bit to get into the outer hip. Not all the way. Just across. Good. And then what I'm going to do, when you've done that, bend the knee and twist. Just letting the back go. Maybe look the other way. We did this. I did this in the warm-up routine as well. Uh, but it's also good to do it at the end of class to release the spine. So then after that, obviously we have to do the other side. So again, you bring the leg in, you rock it around. You can even put your thumb on the hip flexor to kind of let it release a little bit. And stretch it up. Relaxing. You're going to have one side that's tighter than the other. I promise you that. And then I push into my hands, feeling the hamstrings, and release it and push, and release. Good, and push, and release it. And just let it stretch. Again, the more you can keep the hips square, the more you're gonna get a benefit out of this. Just let it go. And then maybe open out to the side, again, keeping the opposite hip flat, or across the body. Again, this is entirely up to you, just what you need. But I would really hold this one after the pushes about 15 to 20 seconds for sure. Good. And then we release it. Hug both knees into the chest. We're going to get into the outer hips now. So 
First leg, foot comes to the knee, you've probably all seen this one, and you pull it in. Now you can either stay like this with the hands behind the hamstring, or grab all of your legs, bringing them in. I prefer this, hugging my legs in. Now the trick to this one is not to roll up. You want to really release your back, almost think of straightening your back and your hips go this way. That's how you really feel the stretch, lengthening out the back rather than rolling up. So we just, again, we hold, release, and once you've done that, other side, again, I'm not really doing the full 15 seconds, this is just to show you all. Again, I'm not rolling up, I'm lengthening my back up, and I guarantee you will feel it so much more, rather than just being here. I'm actively lengthening my spine out and I'm really feeling it in the outer hip. So once you have enough fun with that one, again, I'm just going through this, inner thigh, split stretch, opening it out to the sides as far as you can. Now, you can do that up against the wall, if you like, for more strength, I gotta move because I'm hitting the wall. Um, but I like just doing it on the floor, and again, instead of being up here, rolling my back, straight hips that way. That's more of a normal split. This is not. That's how you really get into the deep inner thighs is rolling out the back, keeping it straight. Almost, and I have to say this, almost arching your back. But that's the feeling you want. Don't actually arch, but you want to lengthen it. And you'll feel it in here. Again, you can use the wall if you like. Um, I just think this is enough for me. Um, so again, hold this 15, 20 seconds or so. Maybe with this one you want to hold it 30, um, just to let it release. And you don't actually have to count, you know, 15, 40, you know what I mean? But it's not about just doing it and getting out of it and going to the next thing. So then once you're done, rock up to sitting. And now we're going to do what I call the cow work. In yoga, it's called the cow. Both knees together and just bend forward. You'll feel it in the outer hip. Now the trick to this one, a lot of people tend to do this and they round. You really want to lengthen the back when you're stretching, really with any stretch. Because the more you lengthen, the more you're going to honestly get into the deep muscles. Rounding your back, I don't feel it. I'm lengthening my back out. If you can't do this yet, you can do like foot to the hip, knee to the foot, and go forward. That's perfectly fine. Um, but really try and get it here. It's really important for dancers to really stretch out their hips. I really emphasize that in all of my classes because this is your turnout, this is your jump. But also, if you're really, really tight, it's going to be impossible to do some things. And it's so important, you will not get the range of motion, you will not be able to get your leg up. It's really about opening up the hips. So switch sides. And just lengthen out the back again. I'm not going to go down here, because this, I don't, I don't really feel it. I feel it more being up straight, lengthening out my back. Um, so play around with it, try and figure out where you're tight. Um, and if you find a really, really tight spot, think of breathing right into that spot um, to just, it actually, it might be just a mental trick, but it helps it release. So just lengthen. And once you're done with that, go back to the first side. And we're going to do a spinal twist. So sitting up tall and twist the opposite direction. Again, getting back into the spine. Again, more outer hip opening here as well. I told my students this today. There is a little bit of a trick. You tell yourself, go as far as you can. I'm going absolutely as far as I can. And then you release. And then you say, okay, go farther. And you should be able to. It's a really funny mental trick. Um, but that's how you can really get benefits of the stretch. You do it. You release it and you say, okay, go farther. And then you should be able to go farther. And then we switch 
size, obviously. If this is not your cup of tea, you can straighten the leg out if you feel you can get a better twist. I like keeping it bent. Um, just lengthening it out really, really good to keep the spine supple are these twists. And then we release it. Legs come out in front. This is another classic one. Up and down stretch. The key to this, again, not here. Lengthen the back out and then go forward. That's how you really get into the hamstrings. And you can just stay like this. You can grab onto the feet maybe. You know, this is the perfect time to do this one. If you like, right here, you can add, if you're a dancer you really want to do it, you can add the middle split stretch. Um, you don't have to. Being on the back, opening up the legs is perfectly fine. It's enough. Um, but again, if you want to add it after the hamstrings, that's fine. This is when I do middle splits. Um, not ever before class. Um, and you can just rock forward and back. I don't really know about this kind of thing. For me, it doesn't do much. I just like to kind of stretch it out, maybe roll forward, you know. But this point being, this is when in the period of the, of the stretch that you do your male splits, um, just to let them happen. So once you've done that, now we're going to do some sort of lungy stretches for the hip flexors. So we come up to all fours. You probably all have seen this before. One foot comes forward and you stretch. Key here, you roll off the kneecap. So it's almost like lift and go forward off the kneecap so it doesn't hurt. Square off the hips. This doesn't do anything. You square off the hips. And I'm really feeling this in my hip flexor. Make sure your knee is directly over the foot, not past. So we're stretching like this. Really getting into the hip flexor. If you like, you can come back put the weight back. I don't particularly like this. I think it's kind of dangerous. So I would just stay forward and stretch. You don't really need to move around a lot here. This is just about being in this position and letting it, letting it stretch. Once you feel like you've gotten a good hip flexor stretch, this is a bit of a challenge. Bend that leg, grabbing on with the opposite hand to stretch out the quad. This might be really incredibly painfully hard, so don't do it until you have worked up to it. Um, maybe even just try and bend it without grabbing. But if you can grab it, bend it in. Again, never, ever, ever do this before class. Really dangerous. Really, really dangerous. So then we go back and stretch up the hamstring again. Flexing the foot. I'm lengthening out my back. I'm not rounding. I'm lengthening, and I even like to turn out my foot a little bit so I feel the hamstrings a little more. This doesn't do it for me. This does. Lengthening out the back as much as you can. So then when you're ready, slide out into your split. This is when you do your split in, in your warm-up, I mean, in your stretching routine. Um, when you're doing a split, make sure you're not opening out. This doesn't do anything. You really want to square it off, hip rolls to the floor, and you're really stretching the hip flexors. Splits are hip flexors and hamstrings. So if you have one, if your hip, if your hip flexors are tight, you're, you're not going to be able to go down. Um, if your hamstring, you can't get the leg up. So that's why you have to work both. So then, obviously, we do the other side. Foot comes forward, I roll off the kneecap. My uh, knee is in line with my foot. I'm squaring off the hips, I'm not open, I'm squaring off the hips. And I just hold it, pressing the hip forward into the hip flexor. Once you've held that for a while, bend the knee in for the quad stretch. I'm just going to go through this quickly. So we do the quad stretch for a while. Hamstring, stretching back. 
back is lengthen out, I turn out the foot a little bit to get deeper into the hamstring. And then when I'm ready, I go out to a split. Okay? So we come back, and this is a very important stretch, especially for dancers, because we don't realize how tight our feet are. So we come to a crouch position, and I don't know if you can see my feet, but what's going to happen is you're going to roll forward onto your toes, not too far, but just until you feel the stretch in the arch and in the toes, letting the head hang long. I'm telling you, at first doing the stretch, it's excruciatingly painful, but once you really start to do it after a couple of days, your feet will start to open up. Um, this is it's for your toes and for your arches. So you stay here a bit. See, I'm rolling forward. I'm not in the middle. I'm slightly forward. And then I'm going to move back towards the heels to stretch out my Achilles. Whole time, head is down. Um, but I'm now the weight. I should be able to lift my hands off the floor. That's just how you get into your Achilles. And then I'm going to push up. Once you're done with that, you can kind of go back and forth until you're ready. Push up, hamstring stretch, just letting it release. And then I like going to downward dog, yoga pose, for my calves, and just bend one knee, and then switch, just holding it for a second, and then switch it. Just going back and forth as much as you like, as long as you like. See, that really gets into the calves. You can even bend both feet again to get into that Achilles, if you like. Big, big stretch. And then when you're ready, walk your hands in and the feet in and roll it up. Now, if that's fine for you, you can end there. But this is where you can do the one where you grab your leg, you go over to ponche, that kind of thing. Um, you can also... Do the standing planche one, where you just planche and then you just stretch, um, or heel in the hand, this one. This is when you do that. You're warmed up enough, you're stretched enough, you can do those, and then you're done. So that's it. Again, it's not very long. Um, you can kind of get everything in there. Again, please make sure you're warm when doing this. I've been doing this kind of routine with my students online for a while now, and even I feel a little bit more limber, so I think it will really help you all. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. To watch my Downton Abbey-inspired natural makeup look, you can click it to watch. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you can click that button, and here is where you can find me on social media. Thanks again for watching.